performance in VR gaming can be vitally important in maintaining a comfortable experience. And while not everyone will suffer ill effects from poor or inconsistent frame rates, it's always preferable to dial in a smooth gaming ride regardless. In this video, I'll explain how to monitor VR performance in-game using FPS VR and show you what to look for in order to fine-tune your experience. So let's take a look. Immersed Robot FPS VR is a monitoring tool and is available on Steam. It costs just £2.89 over here in the UK, approximately $3 in the US. It has a variety of settings, but I'll just be running through the overlay portion in this video. The overlay can be discreetly attached to either controller or locked to your VR headset point of view for constant monitoring. This is generally the tool I use in my performance test videos to see how games are running on my system. Before getting into the reading of the numbers on the overlay itself, it's probably best to just explain a few terms in order to accurately monitor VR performance. The ideal frame rate to run VR is usually at the native refresh rate of your headset. If you own an original Vive, Rift, CV1 or Reverb G2, then the native refresh rate is 90Hz. If you own a Rift S, then the refresh rate is 80Hz. For a Valve Index, you can switch the display to 80, 90, 120 or 144Hz. And the Oculus Quest 2 can also run at varying refresh rates. In each case, the target frame rate you are looking for should match this refresh rate. So, 90 frames per second should be your ideal target for a 90Hz display for example. Frame timings can be an important factor in showing how games are performing. Frame timing is the amount of time it takes for a new frame to be calculated, rendered and displayed on the headset. You can work out each desired frame timing for a given frame rate by dividing the 1000 milliseconds in a second by the given frame rate. So, at 90 FPS for example, we divide 1000 by 90 to give 11.1 .1 milliseconds. This means that it should take each frame no longer than 11.1 .1 milliseconds to be calculated, rendered and displayed in our headsets to maintain a consistent 90 FPS in game. Here's a quick look at the maximum frame timing allowance to maintain common VR frame rates. So what happens if you're in a game and your PC is not able to maintain those frame timings at your given ideal frame rate? Generally, you'll get dropped frames in your game, which means the frame wasn't finished rendering by the time it was required and was basically thrown away. This manifests in stutters and judders in game. However, VR systems have a software safety net built into them in order to prevent this harsh and inconsistent stutter in the form of reprojection. Reprojection is where the game's frame rate is effectively cut in half and every other frame is not a true fully rendered frame but rather a synthetic frame created by the software based on a multitude of data points including tracking and motion data. When a game runs in reprojection at 90fps for example, only 45 of those frames will be true rendered frames and therefore easing load on the PC's GPU. The remaining 45, interleaved with the true frames, are synthetic frames, which are close approximations of what a true, rendered frame should look like. This software manipulation of frames is called motion smoothing in Steam VR, but Oculus has a similar process called asynchronous space warp. The effect of this type of reprojection means a consistently smooth experience, at the cost of some visual artifacts, since the software is effectively making informed estimates as to how the frame should appear in the headset. The visual artifacting when using reprojection manifests as ghosting, blurring or warping of the scene, depending on your positional or hand movements at any given moment. Beyond this, both SteamVR and Oculus allow for even further manipulation if required, whereby you can lock frame rate at multiples of the headset's refresh rate. At 90Hz you are able to lock frame rate at 30 frames and allow each true frame to be followed by two synthetic frames. This obviously creates more visual distortions but can allow the highest demanding games to still run smoothly. Although not everyone likes running in reprojection, many people may not notice and it still provides a comfortable safety net to maintain a smooth experience. With the full information shown on the FPS VR overlay, it should look as shown here in VR. So looking at the top left, you can see your current frame rate. If you're hitting the ideal frame rate for the refresh rate of your headset, then the number will be displayed in white. The further off you are from your native frame rate, the darker red the numbers will show. 
Next to that is the average frame rate of your current play session. And then directly below these are the GPU and CPU frame timings. This section allows you to see which part of your system is struggling the most at any given moment. Remember, the frame timings on both of these sides need to be below the frame timing required to meet a given frame rate. For example, on a 90Hz refresh rate, you need to maintain 90 frames per second. 90 frames per second requires a frame timing of no higher than 11.1 milliseconds. If either the GPU or CPU frame timings are above this figure, you will suffer problems maintaining that native frame rate. If you have motion smoothing or ASW turned on, then reprojection may kick in automatically at this point to ease load on your GPU and CPU, and halve your frame rate, introducing those synthetic frames to maintain a smooth experience. The two graphs show a visual representation of those frame timings, green being good, orange and red highlighting where the PC is struggling. A purple line indicates a dropped frame. Below this we have GPU and CPU temperatures and load, shown as a percentage. Here you should be able to see if one or the other is being throttled for some reason on your system. Next we have your current SteamVR super sampling setting, and beside that I believe to be the load on each CPU core. I haven't really used that particular aspect of FPS VR, but I'm sure it could be useful for some people. Then we have the amount of GPU memory you're currently using, and next to that is the amount of RAM you're currently using. If either of these are being maxed out, then it might be time to alter in-game settings. Below that is the reprojection ratio, which shows what percentage of time in your current play session you have been in reprojection. And next to that is the total number of dropped frames in your current play session. And finally, as an extra bit of information, you are also shown the battery level on each of your controllers. So, by monitoring your frame rates, frame timings, reprojection ratio, and all the other information shown in this overlay, you should be able to alter in-game graphical settings, in-game super sampling, also known as resolution scaling in some titles, and SteamVR super sampling, in order to get as close to a native frame rate as possible. Failing that in some of the more demanding games, then you can still get a great experience by relying on reprojection. Microsoft Flight Simulator is just one of many demanding games that can benefit by using reprojection 100% of the time, when native frame rate is simply not possible. So that's really all there is to it. Monitoring game performance isn't always necessary in every title, but the more you play VR, the more you might notice drop frames, reprojection artifacts, etc. And this is really when monitoring tools like FPS VR come into their own. Thanks for watching this video and please do subscribe for more videos like this one. I'll see you next time. Please consider supporting Immerse Robot on Patreon or joining the Discord or following me on Twitter or better yet all of the above. Links in the description below.